Welcome to My Tomorrow's YouTube channel, where we believe better informed conversations help to make drug development serve everyone better. In today's video, we're in conversation with Tobias Pollock, Director, Real World Data at My Tomorrow's. Tobias, welcome. First off, a couple of easy questions. Who are you and what do you do? So, my name is Tobias Pollock. Uh, I have a background in econometrics and biostatistics, and I am responsible for the data collection during expanded access programs at My Tomorrow's. The term real world data is popping up increasingly in conversations around drug development. Can you, first of all, give us a very basic sense of what this term means? So real-world data are data on medical products that are generated outside of conventional clinical trials. And you can find these data in electronic health records, claims and billing activities databases, or, of course, expanded access programs. Yeah, so there are a number of sources. The one that applies to us in this context, obviously, is expanded access programs as we, we run these programs. Um, maybe you can give us a sense then, uh, looking at expanded access and real-world data, how these two concepts fit together and why increasingly there's more and more attention being paid to both. Yeah, sure. Um, so I think there are two sides to this answer. Uh, first, I think patient access to medicine has become more and more important, whether it's about fair and affordable access to medicine in general, or faster access to investigational medicine in specific, so compassionate use or expanded access. Um, for the real data part, I think we've, we see that there's an interest in, in real data if you look at, for example, PubMed publications. And regulators such as the FDA or the EMA have drafted guidance and frameworks to entice industry to include data from expanded access programs in their trials. The fear here is that current trials are not inclusive enough. So patients in trials may not reflect patients in the real world, and potentially the results obtained in these conventional trials may not generalize to populations outside those that are studied in these trials. Expanded access simply offers the opportunity to, to combine both, uh, provide faster access to investigational medicine, and generate additional data in patients that do not enter trials. Okay, so from rare diseases to infectious diseases, we're seeing real world data being collected from expanded access programs to a greater and greater extent. Can you tell us why our clients and other drug developers are now doing so? I think it's important to note that historically, uh, these programs were not collecting any data as they were deemed unfit to generate reliable results. Um, nowadays, I think there are several reasons why companies collect data. Um, the first reason would simply be to monitor the program internally. Uh, so collecting data helps to understand where, when, and how often patients are treated. Um, but foremost, of course, provides insight into the risk-benefit profile of the treatment, which is really fundamental to providing expanded access. Um, secondly, results from these programs can be disseminated via conference presentations or peer-reviewed publications, providing researchers information about the demographics, the safety, and or the efficacy of these treatments that are delivered under expanded access. Thirdly, these data may be leveraged by health technology bodies, for example, to determine cost effectiveness. Uh, and fourth, albeit rarely yet increasingly, uh, these data can be included into regulatory submissions to the US FDA or the EMA in Europe. That's really compelling stuff in terms of use as well as need. In practical terms, how does My Tomorrow's help drug developers set up and run successful real-world data collection? programs? What, what does that look like? Uh, we basically take our clients to the entire process, um, starting from providing strategy. Say, uh, when is it timely to start an expanded access program and the associated data collection? Mm -hmm. Then it comes to, what do you want to collect? Hey, is there any evidence missing? Is there certain regulatory feedback that needs to be addressed? And can all of that be addressed within an expanded access program? Uh, if you've decided on that, you have to decide where do you want to start the data collection. And different countries have different regulations, different timelines, um, and all of these questions we help to address for our clients. And then you have to decide how you want to collect it. How do you, are you going to do the system setup? How are you going to monitor the data? What are you going to do in terms of data review? And all of this has to be from an expanded access point of view and not from a full-blown clinical trial perspective. Uh, and finally, of course, we also help draft or review statistical analysis plans or perform the entire analysis. And in all of this, we always must find the right balance between not doing enough and overdoing it and almost running a clinical trial. 
there must be quite a fine line to walk. Uh, and I, I really appreciate you giving us the sense of the practical terms of the day-to-day -day that you do. You also mentioned that you do research as part of your yeah. work in My Tomorrows. And I, I'd be remiss not to ask you to give us some sense of how you and your team are adding to the growing body of evidence, a body of research around real world data. So next to our practical work, we indeed also aim to be at the forefront of data collection during expanded access. And that's the reason why My Tomorrows is part of a public-private uh, investigational partnership with the Erasmus University and Erasmus Medical Center. Uh, and in this partnership, we've published several papers on different aspects of expanded access and real-world data, ranging from uh, systematically reviewing the regulatory usage of uh, data from expanded access programs in their decision-making to uh, the financial considerations that are apparent when uh, gene therapy companies want to develop expanded access policies. We aim to cover a wide range of diverging topics as long as there is expanded access and real-world data involved. And in our partnership, we combine the theoretical knowledge from academia with the practical knowledge we have at My Tomorrows, hopefully mutually benefiting both parties. I would say so. <laughs> and then subsequently, uh, at My Tomorrows, we help our clients with the insights we've obtained in our research. So, yeah, for me, it's a win-win-win situation. Okay, so My Tomorrows has been running this win-win-win process <laughs> for almost... Five years. Five okay, years. five, right. Um, well, so in that amount of time, you must have gone into a lot of experience uh, in the process, in the research. I just wonder, maybe on a, on a more personal note, uh, you arrived at this, this job with a certain expectation. And what about the experience maybe has surprised you or something you didn't expect to have from the very beginning? Yeah, so I, th I believe that collecting data from, from patients under expanded access, um, everyone here feels very connected with them and their journey. And we're all engaged to get the treatment there on time. And we all hope that the data can contribute to improving the understanding of the treatment for these patients. Um, yeah, for me personally, of course, I come from a statistics background and I'm definitely not a medical doctor. And I believe that this feels as close as you can get to helping patients. Well said, Tobias, and thank you for this very, very informative conversation. Thanks for having me, Ken.